This lab has three main objectives. First, you're going to find points of equal electric potential, and it's going to look like a bunch of dots. Then you're going to draw equal potential lines. This is like playing connect the dots. And then from there, you're going to map the electric field. Finally, you're going to get quantitative values for the electric field at different points along your little drawing. We're going to start with a little bit of the theory on the electric field. What is an electric field? So the electric field is the force per charge at a location that a positive, positive charge would experience. Now, the force per charge is very important because it's, it's a hypothetical. If you put this charge there, if you put a charge at some place, what's the force it would experience per coulomb of charge? Mathematically, we write this as your electric field is equal to force that the charge would experience per coulomb of the charge you place there. Uh, the symbol Q, no idea why it's there, but it's there and we're kind of stuck with it. So enjoy. So that's the electric field. Um, the units of the electric field are force, newtons, over coulomb. And you're going to calculate this. And we are going to relate this to another quantity we've talked about, voltage or electric potential. So let's take a look and figure out how it relates. So your electric potential is the energy per charge. So for every piece of charge you have, how much energy does it take to put that charge there? Now the units of this are the joules per coulomb. Joule being energy, coulombs being charge. However, these also have this other unit of volts, or voltage, which you've heard about. So how does this relate to the electric field? So to start explaining this, let's look at a hill. All right, and let's put a ball on top of this hill, just like it was in first semester. So if we look at this, if you're at the top of a hill, you have a high potential energy. If you roll down to the bottom of the hill, you have a low potential energy. Low potential energy. And if you think about this, the force you experienced in our physics one example was gravity. Let's finish that word real quick. Gravity. And gravity pointed down. So this was the force of gravity which gave you this potential energy, all right? Now, keynote, potential energy is in joules. Electric potential is energy per charge. It's a silly, not silly, it's a distinction that can really cause some problems. So potential is energy per charge. So if you think about this, let's, uh, let's draw something real quick. You ever seen a map that looked like this? And we call this a contour map. And each of these lines is an equipotential line. Equipotential. I ran out of room. It says equipotential. So when you look at this, remember this would be like your high altitude. And then this would be low altitude. Altitude. And if you're reading this, let's put another one right in here. If you're reading this, where your lines are really close together, this is where your hill, right here, I will say right here, this is really steep. And over here, it's shallower because they're farther apart. So if you have equal potential lines, which is what these are, you will draw these lines 90 degrees, normal to this, and you'll connect this here. Here's a 90, here's a 90, here's a 90, here's a 90. These give you little field lines. Or they tell you the force that the particle is going to feel. It's going to feel a force, and a particle placed here would accelerate this way, a particle here would accelerate this way, and a particle here would accelerate this way, from a high potential to a lower potential. So this is what you're going to graph. And when I say graph, I mean draw. So if we look at this, you can say that your potential, and I'm just going to use V for potential, equals your electric field times dx, change in distance. So your change in your voltage 
change in potential is equal to your electric field that you experienced, assuming it's constant, times how far you went. So if you were solving for E at an, any point in this lab, you would get change in V over change in X. And this is what you are trying to calculate in this lab. So it's how does the potential energy, or in this case, energy per charge, how does your potential change with distance, which is another way of looking at your electric field. And this is a vector because it always points downhill. In this case, there would actually be a negative sign here to keep track of your positives and negatives. So positives would roll downhill. So the electric field is the way a positive charge goes. Positive charge would go downhill, which is why that's there. All right, let's look at our apparatus. So this handy dandy tool is called a multimeter. It's called multimeter because it measures multiple things. And no one ever said we were really creative when it came to naming things. Uh, common port, notice this little symbol, that is the ground. That would be your zero voltage or the back side of your batteries. Typically, we will plug the black wire in here. That's just convention. And then your red wire will plug into this slot. And that is, well, it's used for measuring a whole bunch of things, volts, ohms, milliamps, that's current. But the red wire will go in this slot, or the high voltage part. Other thing is I want you to notice, there are a whole bunch of scales. We want to measure volts in a battery that is DC, so we are going to use this DC volt knob. And these numbers, so the numbers equal the max reading you can get. All right, so in this case, we're using 6 volts. So if we take a look, 200 milli, that's what the little M means, uh, too tiny. 2,000 milli, eh, you can only measure the 1 volt line. Since this is the max, if you try to measure anything above 2,000 millivolts or 2 volts, it gives you an error. It looks like a minus 1 there. And this is 20 volts. Now look, so that's the setting we are going to use. We're going to want to make sure it's on the 20 volt setting. Other thing to note, if you hook your thing up backwards, this multimeter up backwards, or crisscross these wires, it only gives you a negative. It's not a big deal. So don't worry too much about that. No stress. But let's see what happens now. So if we look at this, this is a sheet of graphite conducting paper. It's laced with graphite. So graphite's a conductor, it'll conduct, but the potential is going to drop. It's not a perfect conductor. Right. So what happens, you plug your red wire in on one. It'll hold this at the high side, whatever it's plugged into, in this case 6 volts. The black side will denote the ground. Black side gets connected to here. Red side gets connected here, as we've talked about before. And then you set it. And what setting do you want it? Yeah, this 20 volts, right? Because whatever happens, the smaller the setting, the more accurate you can get. If you're at a big setting and you're measuring a little number, you just lose accuracy, which is bad. Very bad. So you can see this person right here with it set on 200 volts. This is wrong. You do not want that. They are inaccurate. You want to be at the 20 volt setting. They should have listened and watched the prelab. So you will move the pointed red wire. It's connected to a little probe. You'll move it around, and every time you get a little place marked 6, well, 6, not every time you get a place marked 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, put a little dot, and eventually you'll see a pattern, and we'll connect the dots. We'll talk to you more about that on the next slide. When you're done, it looks a lot like this, and you can see these would just be the dots, and let's say that this is a 4-volt line, this is a 3-volt line. So what you're going to do after you have these dots is you are going to connect the dots. And you can use different pieces of colored chalk. That's why they're there. And you'll get a 4-volt line and a 3-volt line. These are your equipotential lines. So these are equipotential lines. So now what you're going to do, let's say we've got a 3-volt line here and a 2-volt line you're going to draw electric field lines perpendicular. So here's perpendicular to this spot right here, perpendicular to this spot, perpendicular, 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 because electric field is perpendicular to your electric potential lines. So we would draw it this way. And in this case, the positive charge goes downhill. So you can go ahead and put the arrows. So the important thing is to draw the lines 
perpendicular electric field lines, these are E, perpendicular to your equipotential lines that you drew before. The final step is to measure, because if you're using the formula where E equals negative change in potential over change in x, you need to know what delta x is. So to get your delta x, you measure from here to here. These metal rulers are a little flexible, and again, do not measure from the end, and always take multiple measurements. Also, don't bend these rulers too hard because they can stay bent, but always get multiple measurements. Measurements, that way you can get your error bounds. So your error analysis, if you're using E equals change in V over change in X, you'll have a plus or minus up here and a plus or minus on here. This error from multiple measurements, multiple measurements, and this, well, you can take multiple readings, but that would leave dots everywhere. So this is going to be from the accuracy, accuracy in the readings of this. So the wrap up. Draw equipotential lines. This looks like connect the dots. Then draw your electric field lines perpendicular to the electric field lines and calculate the electric field in a number of times specified in your lab handout. And also mark where E was found. All right, you need to tell me where you measure the electric field. You can't just pick it. By the way, you could also use delta V as one volt, you could go two volts. You can find a really long field line and calculate the average electric field. So you'll repeat this for both patterns. That's important. Both patterns. And both patterns are going to use the exact same process. Just be very careful and work slow. And when you're done, you'll have a nice pretty picture and hopefully some knowledge of the electric field. And I'll see you in lab.